the allyl group consists of a CH2 group linked directly to a vinyl group, an, an unsaturated carbon-carbon double bond or, or alkene group. This is what's known as the allyl group. And the CH2 group within the allyl group is in a particularly special position known as the allylic position. As we'll see in this video, cations, anions, and radicals are stabilized at this position. And this is because those reactive centers, cations, anions, and radicals adjacent to this double bond can engage in resonance. So we end up with delocalized radical character, delocalized positive charge, or delocalized negative charge, that kind of thing. Allylic systems are relatively stable, and you'll see allylic intermediates, and indeed you probably already have seen allylic intermediates in reactions, and we'll make that point in this video as well. Okay, so an allylic system in, is a three-atom pi system where two of the atoms are these two in, for example, here, the carbon-carbon double bond right here, and the third is either a cation, anion, or radical, one of those structural elements of delocalized pi systems such that now we have a three-atom conjugated system here, right? And we can draw resonance structures to illustrate the delocalization of positive charge, for example. So this cation is known as the allyl cation, and if I push electrons, these pi electrons, over, now this CH2 is neutral, now this CH2 is positively charged, and these show the delocalization of positive charge over the ends of the pi system. Likewise for the allyl anion, if I simply add two electrons to the allyl cation, I end up with the allyl anion, and I can push electrons here into a new pi bond and push these onto this CH2 and show that the negative charge is now delocalized over the two ends of this pi system. And finally, for allyl radical, well, now we have radical character on one end here, and I can again use resonance, pushing single electrons to show that radical character is shared between the two outer carbons there and there. So allylic systems are relatively stable because of this resonance delocalization of either charge or radical character. Now, more broadly on the slide, we're looking at the pi molecular orbitals of the allyl system. Because there are three atoms in the conjugated system, there are three pi molecular orbitals, although for a given type of intermediate, only one of the three is really important. For example, in the allyl cation, because its positive charge pulls those orbital energies down, the most important orbital in this molecule is the LUMO. This orbital right here, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. In the allyl anion, well now I've added two more electrons, and because of the negative charge, the orbital energies have been pushed up. The most important orbital in this molecule is the highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO. And for the radical, it's the orbital that has the unpaired or lone electron that's the most important, and we might call that the SOMO, the singly occupied molecular orbital. Notice that in all three of these cases, the important frontier orbital has lobes only on the outer two atoms. And notice that these lobes correlate with where we find positive charge, negative charge, or radical character in the resonance forms. And this is not a coincidence, right? This is the pi molecular orbital picture matching up with our expectations based on resonance, which is a pattern we'll see again and again as we compare pi molecular orbitals with resonance structures. And one thing it shows is that you can get away with not thinking about molecular orbitals if you can master resonance and thinking deeply about resonance, which is nice, although if you have a pi molecular orbital calculator at your disposal, you might as well use it, and it will allow you to resolve some ambiguities that we'll encounter, in, for example, in looking at electrophilic aromatic substitution down the line. In any event, for the moment here, what we can see is that the allyl system is relatively stable. These important frontier orbitals all have this general shape, and it show, these shapes also show that the reactive centers are the terminal atoms. The internal atom of the allyl cation, for example, does not react with nucleophiles. It's these outer atoms that react, these atoms that have positive charge in the resonance forms. The stability of allylic intermediates means that we can do all kinds of things at allylic positions and allylic functionality that we would be unable to do or would be much more difficult at just plain vanilla alkyl groups. And the three examples on this slide highlight the allyl cation, allyl anion, and allyl radical. 
in this context. So in the first example, we have rapid SN1 solvolysis of allylic halides or pseudohalides. So for example, if you took a molecule like propyl bromide, one bromopropane, and just mixed it up with water and stirred it for a while, trying to get nucleophilic substitution, um, getting, for example, one propanol out of this, you'd essentially see no reaction. Reaction would be very, very slow. Um, that would have to involve SN2 displacement, not SN1, right, because we're not going to see a cation at this primary carbon right here, and that's going to be pretty slow with the weak nucleophile water. So on a pretty standard time scale, you'd pretty much see no reaction. On the other hand, if you remove two hydrogens from propyl bromide so that you end up with allyl bromide, if we turn this single bond into a double bond, removing two hydrogens, and you hit this with water, now the substitution process is much, much faster. Much faster. Because the allyl bromide can dissociate into allyl cation to a greater extent than propyl bromide can dissociate into a cation and, and Br-. And so this reaction can proceed via SN1 and in solvent quantities of water, that's going to make this reaction relatively fast relative to this case. A situation involving the allyl anion comes up if we begin thinking about acidity. For example, we can notice that deprotonation of propene leads to the allyl anion. So follow these curved arrows, we'd end up with negative charge right here. That's exactly the same as this structure above. That's an allyl anion, and the pKa right here is about 43. Not terribly acidic, but by comparison, quite a bit more acidic than the saturated propane. So if I don't have the double bond there, now the pKa is in excess of 50. So we've got something like seven orders of magnitude more acidic, or more, as a result of the resonance stabilization of the negative charge in allyl anion. Finally, a radical example here, allylic halogenation with NBS. And here I'm showing an example with some allylic positions, but also some just plain vanilla alkyl carbons, right? And if you hit this molecule with n bromo 6 cinnamon, it's going to brominate selectively at the allylic positions. That's because the allylic radical intermediate which has delocalization of that radical character, right, over the two ends of the allylic system, is going to be way more stable than these alkyl radicals that would have to show up here or here if bromination was going to occur at either of those positions. And so selective bromination at an allylic position via a radical mechanism can be achieved as well, and it's all thanks to resonance delocalization in the allylic radical intermediate.